Hi you guys, my name is Cyan Gore and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. For today's video, as you can tell by the title, we're going to be mood reading. I do like to do a lot of like reading challenges on my channel, but I honestly didn't know what to do this week. So instead, we're just going to be mood reading and I'm actually starting off with a book that I am 40% of the way through. I don't know why I said 40, um, because I'm definitely not. I'm definitely a lot more. I'm on chapter 40. Now it makes sense, but I'm this much through, so I don't have that much left. It is the first of a sports romance that Anna Wong is reading writing. So it is also her newest release and in this book we are following Scarlett and Asher. Asher is a pro footballer aka soccer player whatever you want to call it and he ends up transferring to a team that his enemy also is a part of. So during the season they kind of have some clashing going on and now it is the off season and over the summer they are forced to go into a team bonding exercise with one another. The thing that they have to do is they have to go through training with a ballerina aka Scarlett. She is a prima ballerina However, after she had an accident, she is now a teacher at this prestigious dance academy and so she's going to be working with them throughout the summer and the issue is, is that she is actually Asher's enemy's sister. So of course, there's going to be tension there, they're training together, her brother doesn't like this guy, yada yada yada, that's basically the premise of it. And I'm not actually going to tell you guys how I'm feeling about it yet until I finish it though, but that's what we're reading. I was about to tell you my feelings on it, even though I just said I wasn't going to. That's what we're reading. Let's go ahead and continue it. Today I did end up finishing The Striker by Anna Wong and here are the issues. Our characters were not bad at all, they just felt very one dimensional, I didn't feel very connected to them in any type of way. Their banter was there when it was but then for majority of the book it wasn't if that makes any sense at all. And it also felt kind of lusty which is insane for a book that is like 600 pages long. I didn't expect that to happen. I also feel like one of the biggest plot points was the fact that it is her brother's rival so that put a lot of tension in their relationship and honestly I kind of hate that trope so that may just be a me thing because I find it so weird when brothers care that much about who their sisters are dating. Obviously you want your sibling to be dating a good person but when you're that involved in their love life and also just our characters not wanting to tell her brother you are grown-ups. Another thing is that the side characters were a little bit underdeveloped like I didn't really care for any of them either and I just felt like there were a few cute moments but they didn't outshine anything that I've seen in other romances and also there's lots of times where it just felt like nothing was happening at all and so for me it felt a little lackluster it's not my favorite romance I definitely a hundred and thousand percent believe that romances should not be this long especially not one like this where nothing is happening that's where I'm confused on what to rate it because personally like I wasn't bored I wasn't having a a bad time and I didn't hate the book. I don't know. I put 3.5 on Goodreads but I feel like that might have been generous. I think it's more like a 3. Now I'm rethinking everything because I literally just posted my rating on Goodreads and I'm rethinking it as I'm speaking so I don't really know. I guess we'll leave it at like 3, okay? It wasn't terrible but definitely wasn't my favorite romance book and again romances do not need to be this long. That is that one but now I'm actually going to move on to our next read and this is going to be The Boyfriend by Frida McFadden. It is my book club pick for the month in Discord and and I also just like Frida McFadden's writing. It's one of her newest releases and I think it'll be a good time. I'm in the mood for a little mystery slash thriller. I am also going to be reading it on my e-reader because I don't have the physical copy. So let's get into it.
Okay, so I am now 50% of the way through The Boyfriend by Frida McFadden. In this book, we are following Sydney. Sydney lives in New York. She is a single woman who uses all the dating apps and basically has been going on multiple dates with different men. At the same time, one of her friends who lives in the apartment building as her is murdered. And all they really know about the suspect is that he meets women on these dating apps and dates them for a while and then ends their lives. And as it turns out, he is also a doctor. What does Sydney do? She continues to use her dating apps and she ends up dating a guy that is a doctor. Make it make sense. It doesn't, but you know, it's fiction, whatever. It's Sydney's world and we're just living in it at this point. But that is what's going on in this book. And so of course there would be an easy solution here, right? The doctor that she's dating is the serial killer, but it's a Frida McFadden book. There's going to be twists and turns and I'm pretty sure that's not going to be the answer because that just seems like the most obvious one. But it's weird. It makes me feel icky because like we've seen a date on her with this other guy and this guy literally reading their date in the first few chapters gave me PTSD from bad experiences that I've had dating in the past and I was literally like grossed out I guess. <laughs> But it's an interesting read for sure. It's keeping my attention. I'm having a good time reading it. So, so far, no complaints. But with most thrillers, the ending is what really gets it. So we'll just keep reading and see what happens because I swear if this plot twist is not good, it will ruin the whole book for me. So let's keep reading. <laughs> Okay, so I have finished reading The Boyfriend by Frida McFadden and this one was good. I know not everyone loves Frida's writing, but every time it's just so entertaining to me. I will say there were points where I was very thoroughly frustrated with our main character, Sydney. There were times where I was wanting to believe the boyfriend, times when I didn't want to believe him. I do like whenever we see characters in thrillers getting suspicious of other people and all these like little clues that make it seem as if someone is guilty of something. Do you get what I'm saying? It happens a lot in multiple thrillers but I really like that aspect of it and it was overall a fun read. I will say I was able to guess part of the plot twist but as always not the whole backstory behind the plot twist I guess and I had a good time so for me it's sitting at like a four. It probably is one of my favorite Frida books so far and every time they just honestly never disappoint so that is that one but now I want to read a book that just came out and I'm so excited for this. If you know me I love my small town romances and I actually I didn't realize that this was released today until it showed up in the mail because I pre-order things and then forget about them apparently but I'm glad that I did and that is Lost in Lassoed by Lila Sage. They're very quick easy romances. Are they absolutely phenomenal? No but they're a good easy fun time and I enjoy them. The first two weren't my favorites but the characters that are in this book we've seen in the other books and I'm very interested to get their story so let's start it shall we? <laughs> I have officially made it 50% of the way through Lost and Lassoed by Rat. This happens every time I start the camera. I am officially 50% of the way through Lost and Lassoed by Lila Sage. In this book, we are following Teddy and Gus is a father of a six-year-old little girl. And at the same time, he manages this like 8,000 acre ranch that his family owns. So he has a lot on his plate and he really tries to do everything, but he can't, right? It's reality. So Teddy, who just lost her job, ends up stepping in and she's going to be the nanny. I did not know that this was a nanny trope and I'm eating it up. I always love 
love a nanny trope. It's the small town vibes too. Everything is just so good right now. I am loving it because at the same time, Teddy is his sister's best friend and they've always kind of had a fighting relationship where they just pick at one another and they've never really gotten along. So I am loving the banter between them. It's just so funny. I literally catch myself laughing and I don't do that often when I'm reading books, but this one, it's just, it's so good. I'm having the time of my life right now. Another thing though is that in the past, there was something that happened between Teddy and Gus and you kind of get little snippets of that throughout it. And right now where I'm at, we just learned officially what happened to them in the past. So now like I get it. I get why there's a lot of tension between the two of them and I am thoroughly enjoying my time with this book. I think definitely just from what I've read so far, it's probably gonna be my favorite out of the series. And I hate to compare, but if you love the second book in the Chestnut Spring series and you like Willa and Kate's characters, this one, you're gonna love it just as well. So I'm gonna keep reading now and I'll get back to you when I finish it. Yesterday, I literally read all of Lost and Lassoed because I was just having such a good time while reading this. I really like the romance between the two characters. I loved their banter so much. I just love when two characters are funny and quite frankly, smart asses towards one another. I just feel like that's how my relationship is. So I like reading about it too. And their sense of humor was just top notch. Their inner monologue, hilarious too. And I think this is definitely my favorite out of the series so far. If you didn't know, it is a series. There's two other books already. This one, just hit different than the other two. I don't know how because it's such a short book, but she somehow was able to take something that was pretty lusty but still make me really like our characters and I could look past the fact that it was pretty lusty because I just liked them so much and yeah, it was such a fun time. Is it one of the best romances in the world? No, but if you're looking for a short small town cowboy fun, flirty, single dad romance. I think you would enjoy it just as much as I did. And because of how much I enjoyed it, I am going to be giving it a four stars. So that was that one. So happy with this. But now I am starting, I think what's gonna be the last book for this video. And that is actually going to be Never by Jessa Hastings. I know that there are a lot of contradicting opinions on this book. I wanna see for myself. I don't know, I'm just intrigued. But recently I finished the fourth book in the Magnolia Park series and it just really made me fall in love with Jessa Hastings writing more than any anything else. So I do want to get into this, see what her writing's about, especially because what, it's like a fantasy. It's a retelling of Peter Pan. She did say that this is a retelling of a certain Peter Pan that was written. I haven't read that one, so I don't know what to expect. Also keep in mind, I haven't seen Peter Pan since I was very young. So I honestly don't even know the like moral story of Peter Pan. I know the backstory of like Tinkerbell, Peter Pan, the Lost Boys and all that, but I can't remember much else. So we will see how this goes. And all of that is to say that maybe my opinion should not matter to you on this book because I can't remember all of that. It's basically like going into a new fantasy completely blind for me. So we'll see how I like it. <laughs> Okay, so it has been a couple of days later and I've made it 50% of the way through Never by Jessa Hastings. In this book, we are following Daphne. So it's not Wendy like normally it would be in Peter Pan. We're following Daphne and she one day gets taken by Peter Pan to Neverland. And Peter Pan cannot age. We also have the Lost Boys there, which are just like all these young children who hang out and live with Peter Pan. You get mermaids. We have Captain Hook's son. And it's just like a lot. I can't tell you exactly what's happening because like I'm confused. It feels like a fever dream so far. All I feel like we're learning is that Daphne is very impressionable and people easily take advantage of her. She's just kind of going along on this ride and Peter Pan is a piece of crap. That's 
all I really know. It, it just feels like such a fever dream. It's wild what is happening in here. I feel like Daphne is just under this spell and at the same time I am too. And it's like frustrating at some points because I want Daphne to get it together in the kindest way possible. Also like I'm 50% of the way through this book and tell me why it's only chapter 12. The chapters are so incredibly long. But yeah, like this one, it's difficult to talk about because it feels very fairy tale esque in a way where like I know what's going on as I'm reading it, but I don't know how to even describe it. Anyways, with that, we'll just keep reading, I guess. <laughs> Again, it has been a couple of days, but I have finally made it through Never. This one was a little bit difficult to get through. I don't know if it was because I was getting quite frustrated with our main character, Daphne, or if it was just like, no, actually, that's exactly what it is. I was getting so frustrated with Daphne. At the same time, I felt a little bit bored at parts because Jessa Hastings, she definitely does write character-driven books, and this was no exception. A lot didn't really happen until the end of the book, and it does feel like a fever dream. I get why people say that. I think it's just like the magic system and the world of it all it felt like what even happened in this book I really just know that I hate all of our characters just about for different reasons and it wasn't what I was expecting again I don't know if that's because I can't remember what actually happens in Peter Pan but it was a wild ride and I mean I I did get bored at parts like I said so because of that I'm gonna have to give it a three stars another thing is that this book did have quite a lot of sexual scenes in it and I was not expecting that I don't know why because there are authors that they'll do a take on an old fairy tale or children's book and turn it into a dark romance so like you expect it to be pretty heavy with the sexual content but for some reason in this one like it felt wrong reading sexual scenes between these characters I don't know it's just a wild ride there's a love triangle in there which I wasn't expecting and like just so much happens but still three stars however I am intrigued about this world so I think there's going to be another book in the series maybe and I might pick it up we'll just have to see if that even is a thing I've heard that it is going to be a series but it's just one of those books where you kind of have to experience for yourself because I don't even know how to describe this but that's that one. With all of that let's do a quick wrap up of the books that we read this week. We started off finishing up The Striker by Anna Wong. Once again a three star. I feel like it's pretty forgettable. I read this literally this week and I already feel like I don't really care or, or remember much of what happened so that speaks for itself. Then on my e-reader I did read The Boyfriend by Frida McFadden. I stand by the fact that this is a four star. Her books are just fun and and they're really quick and easy to get through and there's a lot of like drama that happens in them so I like them. And then we have Lost and Lassoed by Lila Sage. Once again, not the best romance that I've ever read but the vibes were just immaculate and this was exactly what I needed when I needed it. Love a single dad nanny romance and it's a small town romance too. So it's like two of my favorite tropes put into one. It's a four star. And then like I just said, this felt like I took drugs or something while reading it. So three stars. But that is it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts and opinions if you've read any of these books and give me some more suggestions if you have any. But that's it from me. I hope you all have a great reading week and just a great week in general and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!